Your story starts when you walk through these doors. Operation. Hit, go, go. 300 years of tradition. At Heal School, you are part of a family. A community of learners rooted in the community. Some of our staff are pupils here. Their children come here too. It's a place where we strive every day to develop new skills. In and out of the classroom. In a place where results matter, but so do experiences. Where heritage and high tech combine to allow every student to fulfill their potential. We believe in individuals. We believe in working hard together. To achieve the greatest stories possible. Write your story at Heels School. A great place to learn. A great place to grow. What will you be? Good evening and a warm welcome to the Heels School virtual open evening. My name is Justine Mason and I'm principal of this wonderful school. On behalf of everybody at Heels School, I'd like to thank you for tuning in this evening to find out why we believe Heels School is a great place to learn and a great place to grow. Let me just start by saying that we're so disappointed not to be able to welcome you on site and to meet you face to face. We know that you understand the reasons around that, it's for everybody's safety. But on an evening like this, an open evening, we absolutely delight in showing visitors around our school and engaging in the learning, in speaking with families and young people and finding out their hopes and their aspirations and their excitement about coming to big school this time next year. And sadly, we can't do that. There are some advantages, however. For example, I don't have to wear a mask today. I've been wearing one all day, and my goodness, it's lovely to breathe the fresh air in peace. It's just myself and our IT technicians in here this evening. And the other advantage, of course, for you is you haven't got to come out in the cold and the wet this evening. You get to watch this broadcast from your own homes, from your kitchens, from your living rooms, wherever you may be watching this. And I'm hoping you've got a cup of tea and your slippers to boot. Anyway, back to the main event. I really want to say a huge heels hello to all the children out there watching this evening. I know that there'll be many year fives, uh, hello year fives, but I'm particularly saying hello to year sixes because it's you guys, you girls and boys, that over the next few weeks have got to make a big decision about the school that you want to come to this time next year and where you'll spend the next five or seven years of your school career. And we, only, we know only too well what a big decision that is. But don't worry, you know, you've done the first test. You've passed the first test with flying colours indeed because you've tuned in this evening to find out what Heal School can offer you because this is all about you. And if I may, can I point you towards the Heal School website where you'll find lots of information and detail about the sorts of things we're going to cover this evening. Uh, have a look at our Twitter account if you tweet and our Facebook page for Heels as well, because that will give you a really good flavour of what goes on beyond that portico, day in, day out. All of the excitement and all of the engagement. And to try to make this event as interactive as we possibly can for you in these difficult times, we've got the live broadcast this evening, and we've also set up here uh, a, an email account especially for you. This is for you to email this evening and over the next couple of days any questions you might have about any aspect of Heal School provision. Doesn't matter how big, how small, as I say, it's really important to us that you're fully informed when you make that decision in just a matter of weeks. And I've got a team of staff, wonderful staff, who are sitting behind the scenes in their offices at home next to their laptops, ready to respond to your questions this evening in real time. So please do keep them coming. And of course, if you would prefer a phone conversation, then just email through your name and the best number to catch you on. And we'll get back to you certainly within the next 24 hours to make sure you've got the answers to those questions. So year six, without doubt, we'd absolutely love you to come and be part of Team Heels and to wear that black and gold uniform with pride in just less than 12 months time. Imagine it, 33 school weeks time, you could be wearing the Heels uniform. That's just a little over 150 school days. That time is gonna fly by and we'd love you to be part of our school, as I say. But of course, we also need to know uh, that you are confident in knowing exactly what the school can offer. 
And it's important tonight you find out as much as possible about the education, about the experience, about the opportunities, about the support that we can offer you. So let me start by sharing what we believe in at Heels School. And this is really important for me. I always talk to parents, to children, in every assembly I possibly can, reminding them about the key principles that underpin our direction as a school, our philosophy, our ethos, our values. And that's really important. It's particularly important to me because if you are going to join us for the next five, seven years, and we hope you do, we're in this journey together. We're in this journey with that child at the centre of uh, everything that we do and it's important we understand and we're on the same page the sorts of things that drive our everyday decisions and the standards that we set. So our strap line is a great place to learn, a great place to grow and that emphasis is on continuous growth. It's not just the learning and the academic but it's that development of the whole child, that holistic development, that wraparound care. It's something that I personally hold really dear and I think that we do incredibly well at the school here and that will enable us all through that growth, through that nurturing, through that celebration of, of coming through the years uh, to be stronger, to be more confident and to lead the school at age 16 or at age 18 and go on and make a positive difference and be a happy, well-rounded citizen. I always talk to the students about having pride in the badge. Look smart, act smart. And what do I mean by pride in the badge? Well, I talk about this portico that they wear on their blazer lapel, on their, their, their pocket there. It means something. It's a logo of Heels School. And Heels School as a brand means something across the city. I'm really proud when people say to me, where do you work? And I say, a, a school, which school? Heels School, Plimpton. That's a great school. And it makes me beam from the inside out. And I know it's a great school because I'm blessed to have worked here since 2002 and as a, a principal for the last five years. So I know the community well. I know how we tick. I know how we operate. And it makes me proud. But it's only a, a great school because of the people in it because everybody's stepping up and doing their bit and playing their part and having pride in that logo that they wear on their blazer. And I always say as well as part of that to our young people that actually it's your duty to leave that, that badge, to leave that school tie in a stronger place than where you found it. It doesn't matter how strong and how good it was when you picked it up. Actually, what legacy are you going to leave when you leave us at the end of those five years or seven years? How are you going to be not just positive role models to those younger ones coming before you, but how are you going to raise the bar? What legacy, as I say, will you leave? How will you leave the badge in a better place? And that comes back to the way that you act and behave in and out of the classroom, day in, day out. We all play our part in that. Aspiration and dreaming big, aiming high, working hard to get those dreams is again something, uh, a mantra that we use quite regularly uh, at Heels School. The sky's the limit. And we like, like to think that we've got opportunities that we put in place for children to open their eyes to new opportunities, to try new things, to move out of their comfort zone, um, and to really work hard to achieve those goals. And on that note, this sense of working hard, I use this mantra again, train like a beast. And for the football fans amongst you, as I am, you may recognize that is the, the words of wisdom of Manchester City's manager, Pep Guardiola. Manchester City is my team. I'm going to nail my colors to the mast tonight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, as a, a Plymouth girl born and bred, the Green Army will always have a part in there. But having taught in and around Manchester for 12 years, I opted for the blue side. But Pep Guardiola actually speaks a lot of sense and I love this thing this phrase that he used train like a beast because he says the excellence that comes from his team and their success that they get isn't because of a one-off game in the premiership or the cup final it's because of all of the hard work each and every one of those players puts in day in day out on the training field all weathers doesn't matter whether they feel like it or not, they turn up and they play hard. It doesn't matter whether anybody's watching or not, they do it because they want to be better and they know that every minute counts and they know that that's going to improve their performance on the pitch on match day. And that's what I say to the students. Exams are a passport through to your next stage when you get to GCSE or A-level. Of course they are and it's important to perform well in those. But that performance and that success whether it's academic or in other aspects, starts because 
as soon as you come in, from day one, in every lesson, in every day, for every minute, you train like a beast. You work hard, you learn hard, you want to be better. And that's where success will come and look after itself. It probably wasn't the best analogy to use, to be fair, given that City were thumped 5-2 at the weekend by Leicester. So I'm going to move on quite rapidly from that. Um, but one of the things we really value at Heels as well is this fact of, uh, of being inclusive and that everybody is valued, regardless of your, your position within the school. And because everyone is valued, we respect the learning environment. We know that it's not just us wanting to do our best, but other people want to as well. And we've got a duty and obligation to ensure that everybody can learn and enjoy their learning and enjoy coming to school and enjoy the relationships and ultimately then achieve. We celebrate each other's successes and we rally around and scoop each other up and offer that support when things don't go to plan. And they don't always go to plan. It's part of life. And that failure is fine, it's safe to fail, it's okay to fail, and sometimes the best learning comes from failure. And so creating that nurturing environment to be able to take chances and to try and fail is as important as getting the success first time round. And I think the school is incredibly strong at doing that. And I think part of that is the golden thread that runs through the school, which is choose kind. And my mum, always used to say and she she still says and i've no doubt that she's watching this live broadcast tonight uh, but my mum always used to say it's nice to be nice and it is you know uh, thoughtful acts for others kind words kind deeds um, manners all of those things you can't underestimate and they're things that we like to to model as well as teach our young people and i know that you'll be absolutely the same so if we're on the same page as that that respectful kind supportive environment is something that we can really uh, move on and take on and get even stronger at the school and we like to do things right of course we do but also it's about doing the right thing and even when no one's looking. So that real uh, sense of, of pastoral support and guiding and being able to make the right choices, knowing right from wrong, a strong moral compass, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is something again that we hold dear as a school. So all of those things together is what I like to call brand heels, the sense of getting better each day. And as a school, as an organisation, just to give you a sense that we're not complacent, that we're always looking to get better, uh, and that this applies to adults and children as well as the um, organisation, is about getting better each day. We, in 2017, helped to co-construct something called the West Country Schools Trust, which is a multi-academy trust uh, of like-minded schools from across Plymouth, Devon and Cornwall. A really exciting trust. There are 22 schools now within that trust, seven of them second schools 15 primaries and the benefits of that for us as a school is we've got this shared focus on growth and development so that every child within our family of schools goes to a great school there's a real emphasis on staff development on sharing expertise and resources which will absolutely impact on raising standards further in the classroom we're aspirational for ourselves we're aspirational for each other we're getting better for a school each day so let's look now at what your curriculum and your learning experience would look like at Heels School, especially in year seven. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to some of our staff. RS is so important on the curriculum because it is the one subject where students talk about connecting with themselves and others. It's the one subject where they're able to think about those ultimate questions, think about where their place is in society, and ask those deep thinking questions that they want to ask. You know, why is it things are happening in the world? Why is it um, that we need to learn from others? Um, so it's the one subject where they are encouraged to, to dialogue with each other, to, to debate with each other, and really grapple with life's questions. RS as a subject will hit them like no other. It will be the subject where they will not expect to do the things that they're going to be doing. It's going to be one that challenges them, one that gets them out, out of their seats, talking with each other, um, where we invite the world into the classroom. So whether that is through virtual learning, um, whether that's connecting them through the Generation Global Project with peers across the world, or that's whether they're through guest speakers, but we definitely have a vibrant learning experience for every single student who starts in Year 7. We use it in everyday life, every walk of life, every 
job that you would go into when you leave school, um, you use it, and even without realising that you're using it. And using maths in the curriculum helps you with problem solving, so not necessarily maths related problems, but the logistical thinking behind maths helps you to solve all kinds of problems. And I feel so lucky to have a full team of maths specialists who come together to make a, a brilliant team. Um, and in maths, in Heels, we not only do real life stuff in lessons so students can see how it's used, but we do it in different formats in lessons as well. So we use teamwork, um, games, strategies, as well as independent study. We've got for our more able students, our um, year sevens all the way to year 12 <coughs> do the UK Maths Challenge and we do um, team challenges against other schools in Plymouth um, and then for those who need a bit of extra support we've got trained year 12 students who we call our maths leaders and they go into lessons to support the learning of those students and then <coughs> homework's a bit different as well we don't get a worksheet so we have like a dis bespoke online learning platform called Sparks and the more Sparks you do for your homework it learns what you're capable of and then it becomes um, tailored to what that student can do. I love teaching maths at heels. English plays a central role in the curriculum at heels. Our programme of study is designed to encourage curiosity, critical skills and, and to allow students to develop a love of language in its spoken and its written form. We give students um, an opportunity to engage with really challenging but really um, interesting and profound texts so that they can use those as a way of developing their love of the English language and also their ability to express themselves and their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions um, in the spoken and the written word. For me, it goes back to the phrase that your, the limits of your language are the limits of your world and, and our job as English teachers is to challenge students to always push and, and extend the limits of their language to broaden their vocabulary, to broaden their range of expression um, so that they can engage in different walks of life, different experiences and that's, that's our role as English teachers really. From the word go we challenge our year sevens to engage with really high quality texts and also to express themselves uh, in words um, and on paper. So we will start our students off on a creative writing unit to allow them to explore their creativity and express themselves but also to give us as English teachers a chance to get a feel for where their skills and where their areas for development are. We move on to looking at texts like The Hobbit and A Midsummer Night's Dream at various points of the year so our students are confident in engaging with really challenging, historically uh, important and relevant texts and they don't have any fear of things like Shakespeare or poetry. It's really important to us that students feel empowered and engaged with text at that level. Um, we also give students the opportunity to develop their critical thinking skills and their critical writing skills so they can look at a piece of text and feel confident about talking about how it works and how well it puts its message across. So in many ways it's a journey of discovery but it's also a journey of artistic expression. History is a really important part of the curriculum because it's what sets us up and makes us understand how we are and what we are today. Without understanding history and without understanding where we've come from, we can't explain what's happening now and we can't explain the future. And another thing that I think is really important from history is, yes, we learn how brilliant you know, British history and world history is, but there's also lots of negatives as well and we need to learn from those mistakes. So in Year 6, I know that you study lots of history and things like that as well in terms of projects, but history in secondary school when you get to Year 7 is much more in-depth. We start off by looking at the medieval period and we work chronologically throughout the whole of history up until the 20th century. We study the Normans, we study the medieval era, the Tudors, the Stuarts, which I know some of the year sixes have looked at a little bit in primary school, but we use much more kind of um, analysis and evaluation and looking in depth at all the ex exciting things from our past. I love history because I love studying people. I like knowing what people did and why they did it and how our views and attitudes have changed over time and where we can continue going with those views and attitudes.
I just think geography is so important to, to understanding the world that we live in and being able to shape that world as well. I think sometimes we're focused a lot on the things that are going wrong and we forget that we've got power. If we understand systems, if we understand how the planet works, then we've got the power to do things about making things better. And really that's what I'd like our students and heels to take away, that geography does make the world better. So what we're trying to do with our students is give them the opportunity to explore bits of the world that they know they're familiar with, but also broaden that out to places they'll never get to go and uh, think about, learn about things that they will never see directly. So we're trying to broaden their um, understanding, widen their horizons, open their eyes really to the, the beauty and diversity and amazing nature of the world. Our Year 7 curriculum very much starts from what students know, uh, their uh, local area, and we build out from there so that they start to experience and learn about um, issues around where people live, how people have shaped the planet, um, in Year 7 we focus on plastic as a current major environmental threat to the planet and running through our curriculum we try to make sure that our students are prepared uh, for the world that they're going to grow up into so that they understand that they may be part of a problem but equally and more importantly they're part of a solution to many of these environmental issues as well. We're trying to build a lot of skills through our course so the beauty of geography is it brings together lots of scientific understanding but equally a real understanding of people. Um, we're obviously contributing to their knowledge through trying to get them outside of the classroom as much as we can. So whether that's on the school site or their own street or taking them on field work through the course of their studies, that's something that's really important to us. Languages is really important for students because they get to experience a vast range of different skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing. Students are opened up to new cultures of different target language countries and they get to have a great, great time in the classroom. When students come to us in Year 7 they either study French or German and they get to do a variety of activities such as introducing themselves, getting really confident with their speaking in the classroom, learning about the culture of the target language as well as the language. And then there's also the opportunity to join our Year 7 Love Languages Club, which runs once a week that our six formers run. And they do lots of games and lots of videos and fun interactive activities. And of course, really importantly, we run our trips abroad in Aspirations Week. So for example, to Paris, to Cologne or to Barcelona, and they are great fun. So languages really do, for me, open the door for students for the rest of their life, so for all of their travel, be it for leisure or for work in the future, it gives them so many job opportunities and it allows them to sort of get to know lots of different people in different languages. And um, I read something the other day that said, if you learn one language, you live once, but if you learn more than one language, you learn, live more than once. I love it. I love teaching PD because I feel that when I was at school, I left school with a lot of skills, but I didn't leave school with the confidence to be able to ask those questions of why. You know, why are we doing this? Or why are you doing that? Or why shouldn't we be doing this? Making the students aware of right from wrong and allowing them to make choices. You know, it's not about us going, you shouldn't be doing it, it's for the students to know that actually that's not right. But what we're doing is we're almost equipping them for that knowledge that doesn't happen within subjects, so it's having the time to be able to, you know, discuss um, topics that they might not feel comfortable in other lessons to do, or topics that we can pro approach with the skilled teachers that we've got. So, for example, online, offline issues, uh, mental health and well-being. So, what we try and do is we give the students an opportunity to ask questions. I very much know when I was at school I didn't like to ask questions because I didn't really like to think that I might be wrong and that students might judge me on that. We don't want that at Hills. We want to make it an environment where they feel that they can ask questions. It's fine to make a mistake. You know, if they don't ask those questions then actually they'll never know what's right from wrong. So we try to develop the confidence for the students to be able to go, I don't agree with that or I agree with that. So we've had plenty of emails in so far, my colleagues tell me, so do keep them coming, that, uh, that's great. Uh, but can I just say, please, Molly in year six and uh, sister Ellie, who's here at Heels in year 10, could you have a word with your parents, please? There's no shout outs going on tonight, please. If you could tell them to behave yourself, that's much, uh, much appreciated. Anyway, 
On to our school day. Let's give you a bit about our curriculum. Our school day runs from 8.40 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day, and our day is split into five one-hour lessons. We have a break mid-morning at 11 o'clock, and then a lunch break at 20 past one. We run a really broad and balanced curriculum offer from day one in year seven, which includes, are you ready for it? French, German, geography, history, religious studies, food technology, design technology, drama, art, music, personal development, computing and PE, as well as English, maths and science. And we managed to fit all of those subjects into a 50 hour teaching cycle over two weeks, what we call week A and week B. Each tutor group is a mixed ability group, science, personal development, music, art, drama and computing are all taught in tutor groups in year seven, whilst for English, humanities and languages, well they're taught in different mixed ability classes for all groups in year seven, except for one support group made up of students with specific literacy needs and that's based on teacher assessments from primary colleagues and from SATs. Students can move in and out of this support group in light of assessment data if it's appropriate and they're also extracted from English lessons to follow a specific literacy programme. Maths lessons throughout the curriculum are set by ability across the whole year group from year seven, which we believe provides the best opportunities for stretch, challenge and support as appropriate and hence maximises progress in maths. This also supports our tiered entry at GCSE in later years of course. Opportunities for set changes occur throughout the year and they're informed by internal assessment data and discussions between heads of departments, students and parents as appropriate. For PE, students are taught where possible in single sex groups and for technology, they're taught in smaller mixed groups to safeguard youngsters in a practical delivery. We offer French or German as a first foreign language to Year 7 and this is known as the core language. It's decided upon when students first join us in year seven and four tutor groups take French and four tutor groups take German. And all of those students will study a modern foreign language as part of their core curriculum throughout the whole of Key Stage 3 and indeed the majority go on to study a language at GCSE. So this model from year seven is followed through into years eight with one significant change and science in year eight becomes set and run in the same classes as the math sets. Again, it refines the level of challenge and support for students as appropriate. And the math teachers, the science teachers, well, they work together to ensure the setting for all students works. When we get to GCSE and A-level, we introduce subjects like business studies, psychology, sociology, criminology, Spanish, travel and tourism, hospitality and health and social care to add to all the other subjects that I mentioned just now. So something for everyone, regardless of interest. We run a two year Key Stage 3 and a three year Key Stage 4, meaning our students choose their GCSE options around Easter in Year 8 and they start their GCSE course of study from September of Year 9. So these GCSE courses run for three years and that allows ample time to get to grips with subjects that they may not have been studied before, uh, but also to ensure sufficient depth of knowledge and opportunities for enrichment beyond the exam specification. So as to develop a passion for the subject and having more time to apply that lesson in and beyond the classroom. We're absolutely thrilled that so many Heels graduates fly the nest after five or seven years and go on to even greater things. Well over two thirds of our post-16 students progress to university. We have better than local and national averages for students moving into employment or further education. And we have three times the Plymouth average for students securing high quality apprenticeships with top performing local businesses. Employers want Heels graduates. Why? Well, because they're employable young people with the skills, the attitude, the experience to make a positive difference. We, with your help, produce young people who are both rounded and also grounded. We are incredibly proud of the better than national exam results our young people achieve year on year. 2019 saw the school's best ever GCSE and A-level results and the class of 2020 from this summer bettered those still as expected. It's a shame that those outcomes aren't validated by external moderation though, because the, obviously the exams didn't run this summer, but we were expecting an improvement on last year's best ever results and by golly, that year group delivered. 
Anyway, I'm conscious. Year six, you've not even done your key stage two sats yet. And here I am talking about exams that you won't sit for at least another six years. So I'll move on. But if you are interested, parents, carers, please have a look on our website uh, at our data because the examination results there really do make pleasing reading. Part of a, a quality education, we believe, is developing the whole child. And that's why we really feel it's important to provide a wide range of extracurricular opportunities, ensuring that there's something for everyone and encouraging youngsters to try new things. Of course, with school ending at three o'clock, it gives ample opportunity for extracurricular activities. And we offer a broad range of academic, sporting and creating activities and clubs. Clubs like Debating Society, Animal Club, Drama Club, Christian Union, Combined Cadet Force, Duke of Edinburgh, a wide range of sports and music and arts club, computing club. I could go on and on. We also run an annual enrichment week in July where students have a choice of almost 30 activities to opt into for the week. Some of them are free, some require payment, some of them are in school and some further afield, both in the UK and uh, abroad, particularly around Europe. It's an absolutely fabulous week. We've got talented artists, musicians, dancers, performers, and some of whom I'm sure you've seen in our brilliant school plays. And we've got a large number of very talented sportsmen and women in a range of sports, many of whom play for county or national level, including in rugby, football, golf, diving, sailing, netball, to name but a few. And we work really closely in partnership with families and coaches to balance the demands of training with schoolwork to support excellence for our elite sports people, both within and beyond the classroom. Much of this and more is referenced in our latest Ofsted report, which can be found on our website. Heels is classed as a good school by Ofsted across all areas good for leadership, curriculum and outcomes, behaviour and wellbeing, personal development and post-16. But be mindful that that report was written in 2017 and we absolutely know that the school's gone from strength to strength since then. And we continue to work hard to fulfil our ambition to be outstanding in every measure, as aspirational as that may seem. Lights, camera, action! Welcome wonderful Year 6 students and parents to Drama and Theatre Studies at Hills School. It's our ethos and passion here that we want to instill your son and daughter with the confidence to present and promote themselves clearly. In an age of technology where we are losing the ability to communicate and present, it's one of our key founding skills here that we promote at Hills School. But on top of that we present and teach them theatre design, theatre direction and theatre performance through modules such as melodrama. Will she await? I await my victim. Will she come? Along the lines of Bidsomer Night's Dream, she may be little but fierce. And Greek theatre looking at the Trojan woman, just to name a few of our modules. We're all about skills here at Hills, but it's about the self-centred person, making sure that we support your son and your daughter's journey and giving them a voice. On top of that, we're so fortunate to, to offer a wide range of extracurricular activities, be it through our Key Stage 3 performance group, where we perform each year to an audience, or to our large-scale performing arts group, performing musicals such as La Miserable and Adam's Family. Whatever your son or daughter is interested in, we can make that happen. So why not join Heels and be the best that you can be? Hello Year 6, welcome to Heels School. My name is Mr Edwards, I'm Head of Computer Science here. In Year 7 we do lots of amazing cool things. We look at how to make 3D games, um, you design your own game. We also look at how to do um, text-based Python programming. Uh, where again, you'll look at also augmented reality, so that the things around me now and how you can actually incorporate those into real life, day life and how it's going to be the future of what we do. Um, we look at the latest technologies. We've also got loads of really cool, exciting clubs for you guys to join at break times, lunch times, and even after school. Okay, there's something for everybody within the computer science department. We'll even show you how to make cool videos like this, so you've got um, videos within videos, as well as we look at cyber security as well, so how hackers work and how they try and steal information and what we can do to prevent that. Um, but again, really looking forward to seeing you guys come up in September. 
Hello, my name is Mr Cartwright. I'm here to tell you about all the exciting opportunities that we have in Heal School for Music. Um, it's offered at Key Stage 3 in Year 7 and 8. They do one hour a week and they'll do plenty of performing work on keyboards and other instruments, as well as doing composing and understanding music as well. It's an option at GCSE and we have really good uh, numbers at GCSE, which shows the popularity of the subject. And it's also offered at A-level as well, and we're one of the very few schools in the area that's still able to offer the A-level music. Um, in terms of instrumental lessons, we can offer instrumental lessons in pretty much all subboard instruments, guitars, pianos, uh, drums, we do singing lessons as well. So if your child wants to carry on with those in the school, they can do. Uh, we do loads of extracurricular activities, uh, concert band and choirs, and we also have a steel band in the school as well. So those perform in their Christmas and Easter and summer concerts. Um, and we also do uh, musicals in conjunction with the drama department. Last year we did The Addams Family and the year before we did Les Miserables. And those are always really, really popular and done at a really high standard. So if your child has any interest in music and wants to develop their skills further, there's plenty of opportunities here in the school. Thank you. Humans are naturally inquisitive. And what I'm trying to do is encourage, uh, uh, foster a love of asking the questions why in the next generation. Um, children are, are full of brilliant ideas and it's trying to extract those ideas out that some of us may have never heard of before because they're the people, you are the people who are going to solve the problems for the next generations. So I'm hoping to encourage more and more to do that. Basically we're trying to, to learn and improve our understanding of, of the universe and the world we live in. So that's trying to understand the smallest speck of light from millions and millions of light years away, right down to the cells and atoms and human beings. Um, along the way, of course, we're, we're looking at the way that the physical world works, the biological world works, and of course, the chemical world. So we're, we're talking about, and we're trying to educate the students to understand not only working as part of a team in a scientific process, but the methods involved in becoming excellent scientists. Um, the passion for science is, is all around us. It, under the present circumstances, we're talking about COVID-19, and we, stood, we refer straight away to the science world trying to help us solve these problems. Our aim here is to try and encourage the next generation of scientists to solve the problems that we haven't even discovered yet. And that's what drives us all. Science at Heels in Year 7, fantastic. Um, well, we're in a lab for a start, so that's a whole different sort of classroom to what they, you, you may have, have, have been involved in in primary schools and junior schools. So a lab is a very specialist room and it enables us to, to use fire, to use water, to use electricity. And during your first year with us in Year 7 at Heels, uh, you'll be mastering how to use a Bunsen burner, so flames will be under your control. And then we've got the use of different chemicals to make wonderfully coloured solutions and learn about acids and alkalis. And then on biology we start looking at microscopes, so we're trying to delve down deeper into what makes us work as an example. And then in physics we're looking at the, the forces, the energy ar around in the world and discovering some really important principles about how energy can be created or uh, can't be created or destroyed, but it's just changed and things on planets along the way, so it's, it's really an exciting stepping stone ready for the next stage of science. I think the main thing for me is that the students learn very much by doing and that makes it enjoyable, it makes the time go really fast. Um, they also have the opportunity to learn how to use lots of pieces of equipment that they perhaps wouldn't have the opportunity to use and become comfortable and confident using otherwise. Um, they're able to use processes that are used in the industry and in the workplace to design and make a range of products using a variety of materials such as wood, metal, plastic, food, and they also get to use computer-aided design packages and are able to do 3D printing, laser cutting, vinyl cutting, lots and lots of really exciting things.
and food. They learn how to cook a variety of dishes, both sweet and savoury, but they know in detail about nutrition, healthy eating, how to look after themselves. We look at budgeting and costing. In design and technology, DT, they learn how to make, how to repair things, how to handle a variety of materials using different equipment. Um, it's the be all and end all. As far as I'm concerned, it's the best subject on the curriculum. I love learning by doing myself. I am so proud to be in charge of a wonderful team of staff who are extremely experienced. They are all really enthusiastic and passionate about the subject. And we are also so lucky to have really, really fantastic facilities. We've just got newly refurbished food technology kitchens and we have three excellent design and technology workshops. Well, art is important in life and it underpins everything. We live in a visual world. Uh, the fastest growing area of employment is in the visual, in the media, um, looking, you know, everything you see on the telly, everything around you has been designed. Um, and every business, every area of life, there's someone who's the visual person. And it's, the, you know, one of our most powerful ways of communicating. The first thing is that hopefully they will enjoy it because um, art is such a wonderful thing to be doing. So they'll be having fun. But they'll also make really fast progress because they'll be secure. We'll teach them the skills. So it doesn't matter where they come from. We will make sure that they can draw, that they can make things, that they can use IT, everything that they need to be able to be creative and develop their ideas and produce amazing artwork. And there might be some chocolate too. I love teaching PE because every day is different, every day is a challenge and there's always something to learn, there's always somebody new to try and inspire. Uh, Yes, I think we're fortunate. We, we've managed to develop great relationships with our pupils and um, largely those relationships are extended within the, the extracurricular programs. We can get to know pupils really well and, and, and they get to know us as well. But in terms of really loving or having a passion for the subject, it is that you're know, trying to, to ignite that, that, flick that switch in somebody and trying to find that light bulb moment of actually right I found my thing so this is what I'm passionate about this is what's going to help me lead a healthy active lifestyle I think that's what drives us. Beyond the sort of physical uh, benefits that it gives the individual there's also sort of the, the social aspect which I think is huge um, I would say that it creates great friendship groups it brings people together that perhaps weren't together previously I believe that passionately that there's something out there for everybody, whether you're somebody that enjoys the individual pursuits, whether it's somebody that enjoys the team affairs. And I think in terms of teaching values of how we want people to interact with one another you know, in general society, we get so much from our curriculum. So I think what they can expect here is um, a regular timetable of PE at least twice a week, and that's without the extracurricular focus as well. And uh, what they're going to get from us is uh, uh, an opportunity to engage in uh, not only team sports but individual pursuits, uh, traditional sports, non-traditional sports and they're really going to get themselves an opportunity to find something that works for them as the individual to help them um, lead a, a healthy active lifestyle and to put them on that pathway. So the focus on quality first teaching is a really important one. But I hope you get a real flavour of the sense of a passion that staff have for their subjects and the fact that they really enjoy teaching at Heels School. But as staff, of course, we also really enjoy the students. And it's often commented on that we have a calm, purposeful, inclusive and nurturing environment and that there are strong relationships between staff and students. This, in part, is because of our carefully considered pastoral system. As a result, we have high levels of attendance and engagement I'm a firm believer if a child feels safe, happy and valued, then they'll enjoy coming to school, they'll try hard and they'll perform better, simple. This is why we invest strongly in student support, as personal growth and happiness are as important to us as academic achievement. Our pastoral system is based around year groups from year 7 through to year 13. Tutor groups are carefully structured to create balance of gender, personality and ability 
and each year group is made up of eight mixed ability tutor groups, each one of around 30 students. Each has a dedicated team around them comprising a head of year, a pastoral support manager, a team of tutors, a senior leader link and a designated safeguarding team. Tutor time runs daily and it's an important 20 minute slot each morning to not only check that students are physically and emotionally ready to learn, but also to deliver a taught curriculum around developing important skills like leadership, organisation, resilience, initiative, communication, as well as an emphasis on well-being and careers. And this is then developed through an extended uh, personal development lesson each fortnight to explore important issues such as online safety, relationships and sex education and substance misuse, as well as to deliver an extensive careers programme incorporating things like work experience, careers day, trips and visits, sector-based enrichment in the classroom and access to the HEALS alumni programme to find out how HEALS graduates have progressed into the world of work all over the world. Our school expectations around conduct and behaviour can be summed up in three important words. Committed, respectful, safe. Our default, of course, is to expect good behaviour because that's what we teach and that's what we model. And by and large, we absolutely get this in abundance day in, day out. And each external review we've had in recent years, including Ofsted, has made a point of noting the good behaviour of our children in and out of lessons, with clear and consistent routines and strong relationships evident. But, spoiler alert, in a school of 1,300, as you can imagine, not every child is an angel every minute of the day. And when things do go wrong, and they do sometimes, we deal with it. Relationships are key. And so we have a restorative approach to behaviour management where young people are supported to reflect on incidents of poor behaviour, to recognise those triggers in themselves and to be taught strategies to manage emotions appropriately. Our behaviour coach, who's in school for one day a week, works with specific young people to change their behaviour in a positive, incremental way where required. There are some people who struggle with our expectations for all manner of reasons. And whilst we never tolerate poor, disrespectful or intimidating behaviour and we act swiftly to address it where it may happen through the use of things like our worn move park system and our step sanctions, we do also work really hard to try to understand where that behaviour is coming from so that we can address this with the child and often with their family directly and move together uh, forward positively. We do recognise that being a young adult is really difficult and we've got a range of support and intervention to help our students and their parents and carers if needed to navigate the challenge of the teenage years. We work closely with external agencies to ensure the learning and the emotional needs of our young people are met to allow them to thrive. And we've on site face to face counselling for young people who benefit from extra support through Young Devon, as well as a freely available online counselling provision through cooth.com. As I said earlier, our aim, with the support of parents and carers, of course, is to grow happy, rounded, but grounded young people. And lots of people, not just me, believe we do this really well at Heels. Now, by Plymouth standards, we're fairly large at 1,300 students, but we're still small enough to care and to really know your child, yet we're big enough to be able to afford the curricular and the extracurricular opportunities to support a broader educational experience. I want to assure you that HEALS has been cited as having a fantastic transition programme and a successful enhanced transition programme for those who may need extra support, be it emotional, learning or physical support in settling into their new school. This year we took 240 students from 42 different primary schools across the city and we make sure we visit every school to meet each child, to talk with teachers and support staff, the people who know you well. We get to know everything we possibly can about you so that we can assure the appropriate care and support as well as curriculum is put in place before you start at Heels. It's really important to us that you make the best possible start to your new school. In year seven, we have a head of year, Mrs Crosley, and a team of eight specialist tutors and non-teaching members of staff who form part of our support and intervention team and who offer support through student services and our supportive education department all of whom combine to play a tremendous role in working with families to ensure year transition is smooth and that children settle quickly, no matter how anxious or frightened about moving to secondary school. 
and that soon they feel part of the Heels family. Let me introduce you to Mrs Crosley, Head of Year 7, to give you a little more detail about transition. So the transition process starts um, in Term 6, the year before um, Year 6s join us. And, and that's when we start contacting all the primary schools. We get the list of who's going to join us, so we know exactly who's coming and which school they're coming from. We contact every single primary school um, to find out a little bit of information about every child that's coming here, so we know a bit about them before they start. Um, if we can, we go and do that face-to-face. -face. If not, we do it via email or remotely. Um, so we've got that information, so we can start to put the tutor groups together. Um, students are invited in to spend a day with us in um, June or July times. So they have a transition day and on that day parents come up in the evening and that's where parents get all of the information that they need about uniform, about equipment, about the routines of the day um, and they get the chance to ask any questions and the students meet the other students in their tutor groups during that day um, and get a taste of what life is like here at Heels. We have a dedicated team of Year 7 tutors who only work with Year 7s so they are very used to dealing with nervous Year 7s who join us in September because secondary is different to primary school. Um, you will be expected to go around to different classrooms, you have lots of different teachers, a timetable to get your head around and we are here, we've got a great team of staff to support them through that. So from the newest recruits to Heal School to the oldest, wisest students at the other end of school, I'm going to fast forward to our sixth formers. We have a wonderful group of post-16 students, over 200 of them in our sixth form. And within that, we have what we call the junior leadership team, a group of head boy deputies, uh, head girl deputies, and assistant head uh, boys and girls to really work alongside my leadership team, the senior leadership team, and hold each other to account. And together we look at moving our school from good to great. How can we make it better? How can we work together? What's the student voice? Where do we need to improve? And a really honest look at our school, what's good about it, and what we need to take forward uh, even more. So let's have a look to see what Holly and Joe, our head girl and our head boy, have to say about Heels School as they enter their seventh and their final year at Heels School. Hello, I'm Joe Hannon and I'm head boy. And I'm Holly Razor and I'm head girl. We were both nominated into these roles by our peers and are really excited to lead the students this year alongside the senior leadership team. We believe Heels is a great school because it's home to a really supportive environment. It's got many great new opportunities and experiences, some of which include shows, the CCF, sports and more. I have had a really positive experience being part of the Heels community and it has given me so many great opportunities. I'm able to represent my peers as head girl, but also I've taken part in drama productions and in dance events. One really unique opportunity is that I've taken part in Generation Global with the RS department. This is where I take part in global video conferences with people my age across the world and we discuss really re relevant topics and they've just been amazing. Since I joined Heels, I've also had lots of opportunities to grow as a student both in extracurricular activities, having taken the opportunity to be involved in school plays, debating competitions and maths tutoring for younger students, as well as in my regular lessons where I've been helped to achieve as much as I can in a really supportive environment. We understand that the transition into Year 7 can be scary, but the junior leadership team and the Year 10 mentors will be there to support you as you go into Year 7 and throughout your experiences at Heels. The Year 10 mentors are a very helpful resource for the new Year 7s. Holly and I were both mentors when we were in Year 10 and both found the support from mentors invaluable when we were in Year 7. Mentors are there to show you to your lessons, will be there on your first day to help you make new friends and there will be a friendly face ready for when you begin your journey into Heel School. Heels is a great school and you will create so many memories and new friends. Coming to Heels is a new experience and we are sure you are both full of excitement and worry but we are here to reassure you that you will have a great time. We can't wait to welcome you here and hope you've had a great evening discovering everything you need to know about Heal School. So that brings us towards the end of our first ever virtual open evening. And we ho we've hoped that uh, you've really enjoyed finding out more about us. Remember the uh, email address up there if you've any queries, keep them coming please. Of course, we do recognise that you've got some tough choices ahead in identifying your preferred school before the 31st of October. I'm often asked, how can I be sure of getting a place at Heels School? And it's hard to say, 
for sure, of course, as it depends how many families name us as first choice each year. But we've seen this number of first choices rise significantly year on year in recent times. Our admission number used to be 210, but now for the third year running, we've been able to extend that number on intake by another 30 children to try to meet parental choice. And so that takes us to a 240 intake. And as I say, we try and do our very best to accommodate parent choice and child choice. But we can't go over 240 in a year group. We just physically don't have the space, even though demand has been there in recent years. To give you an idea, last year we had 236 first choice places at the first tranche of applications in early November for 240 places and 242 second choices. By March, however, when there are some late applications that come in and some people change their second to first choice and families receive confirmation of the schools allocated, we'd already filled up from first choice choices alone. And there was a waiting list. So all I can say is it's highly likely that children will be allocated heels if you name us as first choice, but it's not very likely that you'll secure a place if you don't put us as top choice. I really can't say more than that, I'm afraid. It's a simple case of supply and demand, and we know that people want to come to Heels. We're delighted to be such a strong school of choice, of course, but we also recognise that this may not make things easy for you. Another question I'm asked is, how far do we take from? Where's your catchment area? Well, it's really important to note that the demographic in Plymouth means that we won't fill up solely from our traditional catchment area, which was in and around Plimpton. And so we continue to actively encourage and welcome applications from right across the city. And in the current year seven, we took 240 children, as I say, from 42 primary schools, which was right across the wider Plymouth area. And on that note, it's really important when you're making your choices to think about transport. We don't run a school bus service, but we are really well served by uh, public transport. So City Bus, who operate the 21 and the 21A services that run from Barn Barton through to Chaddlewood, going through St. Budo, Keyham, Devonport, City Centre, Catdown and Marsh Mill before arriving at Plimpton. And these buses, they run every 10 minutes, Monday to Friday at present. They stop on Plymouth Road, which is about a five minute walk to the school gates. And a similar route's the 20A that stops on Plimbridge Road at the top gate of school. And also Stagecoach Southwest run the 52 service, which travels from Derriford through Estover, then Liam and on into Plimpton. Most of our children do walk or cycle to school, but we do have an increase in number of students who bus in and out. But please do consider making uh, transport when making your decision because we hold good punctuality and attendance in really high regard. And it's so important that people can get here and children are here on time. So all that remains for me now to say is, is thank you for tuning in and uh, best of luck to you. I have every confidence, as you've done tonight, that you'll do your research on schools, that you'll see what's on offer. Every school is unique. Every school has got its own approach, its own little nuances, its own unique selling point. And I hope that we've conveyed what ours is through uh, this presentation this evening. But do your research. I know it's a big decision, but don't worry too much about it either. And let me assure you that every school, doesn't matter which one you go for, every school is in the business because we love working with young people and we absolutely want to get the best out of working with young people and make a difference. Of course, we'd love you to be part of Hills School. And we'd love you to be here and know what makes this school so special and to join uh, the team. And we'd be thrilled if you came and joined us next September in year seven. And we'd be confident in the knowledge that you would soon settle and you'd love being part of the community just as much as we do. But don't just take my word for it. Let's finish tonight's presentation by hearing from those people that really matter. Those people at the centre of all of this. Some of our wonderful students, our awesome young people. So from me and all of us at Heels School, take care, stay safe, really hope to see you soon. Uh, and all the very best. Thank you and good night. Everyone's so accepting. The teachers and the pupils, they just help you to grow and to be yourself. My favourite thing about this school will probably be like the sports facilities. I really like sports, so I love basketball, football, netball. 
This school is great because it works for everyone, however academically good you are. You can do what you like to do when it gets to GCSE levels, so that's what I think is really great about this school. This is the great school because of the people in it, because of the family ethos, standing side by side with each other, for each other, wanting to be better each day as children, as adults, and growing together. I love it here. It's really easy to make friends and just fit in. The teachers are really nice, they're really good, and I would never want to go to any different school. Definitely come to this school, it really involves you. You always feel like you're part of something when you come to this school, and that's what's amazing about it. I get paid for doing this job, it's amazing. <laughs>